things are going relatively well for me now. We still have our ups and downs. Some days I still feel a sense of uncertainty about my future, though. I cannot really complain. I made my decisions and have also made peace with most of them, and the reality that you cannot change the outcome. They are my decisions and have made me who I am. There is still one decision that still haunts me, I will admit. It was not particularly the decision itself, but the ominous power that made such an offering possible. I was somewhere in my mid-twenties. I had just graduated with my bachelor's degree, which put me into a hefty student debt and was barely scratching out a living working multiple part-time gigs. All the while hustling to apply for jobs that made use of my extremely expensive piece of paper. I had also just been dumped by my girlfriend of five years who I had planned on proposing to, and then shortly after had found out that she had cheated on me with someone I had considered a close friend. As for the rest of my family, or friends, they were either out of town, living their best lives, or had major issues of their own. I fell into isolation. It was not all gloom, though. I made great use of this time to establish a better sense of self and autonomy. I would go out by myself and have just as good a time as any other. I slowly started to overcome my social anxiety and began to, in a sense, live. Still, even with this newfound confidence, I was not prepared for this particular night. I almost reverted back. I had discovered a particularly cool dive bar in a town one county, over which had an open mic night. The comedy sucked, but the people were chill. The local taps were great, and it was nice just to get out. I would never stay long, though. I enjoyed walking around the town, as it had a rather robust weekend nightlife. The stories that I would walk past, fights between boyfriends and their girlfriends, buddies trying to rescue each other, and the struggle home after a night of overestimation. I saw a lot during this time. On this night, I was more hesitant to head home, so I stayed out a little later than usual. The bands were beginning to pack their instruments. The crowds at the bars began to shift to the nocturnals, and there was a faint summer coolness in the air brought on by midnight, in a place usually warm all year. I was headed down what some considered to be one of the more ghetto streets. The whole place had your typical Californian small town feel to me. This area just was not as kept as the rest. There was a young girl stumbling out of one of the clubs. She looked to be in about her early twenties wearing clubbing attire. A guy who looked a bit older followed after her. I had seen her wandering around town on many nights prior. This guy seemed new, though. I coincidentally followed behind. Neither of them noticed me. They stayed in front of me for some time until they turned a corner. I sat down on one of the benches right outside the board game shop and contemplated going home. They remained in my view for some time as they continued on. I could not help but watch as I had an uneasy feeling about the situation. She was stumbling, barely able to hold herself up. He seemed stoned sober. Maybe he was a friend, and her designated driver. What did I care? After some contemplation, a curiosity got the best of me. I might at least run into them one last time, and then make my way to my car, which was in one of the free parking garages quite a ways back. Sure enough, as I began to pass one of the back alleys, I heard some scuffling and a clear yet still slurred and nearly lifeless. No. In the light of the nearby lamp post, I could see that this creep was trying something with her pinned to the wall. Hey! 
I yelled. At that moment, my veins ran with cold water. I confess I'm not the brave type. The guy quickly shot a look at me. Maybe I could take him if it came to it, I thought. Fortunately, I think he was surprised even more so at being caught, as he took off running down the alley and around the corner. Hey, I said, approaching the young girl. Are you okay? She slid down the wall and onto her bottom. Are you okay? I repeated. I do not feel so well, she finally muttered. Is there anyone I can call for you? No answer, just more muttering. My initial thought was to call the police, of course. Then I figured that the hospital was not too far away, so I could possibly walk her over. I took her hand, and as delicately as I could, tried to haul her to her feet. All right, come on, I said, as I tried to pull her up. But she gave minimal effort. I did not want to hurt her, and she seemed in a bad place. Walking her even just a few blocks was probably out of the picture at this point. I settled on calling 911 and waiting with her. It did not take long for them to drive by our way, and when they did, I flagged them down. She was still basically sleeping in the alley. Are you the one who called? Yes, yeah, she is over here. I tried to move her, but she was out of it. They followed me down the alley with a stretcher. Ma'am, are you okay? What is going on? Can you hear us? No response. They checked her pulse and breathing. She was still alive. I stood by, watching. Are you the boyfriend? No, I was just out for a walk, and I noticed she was with some dude. She seemed already out of it when the guy seemed to be trying something. When I said, hey, the guy took off. As they brought her into the ambulance and began to check her pupils and other vitals, they asked me for more details. I tried to explain myself thoroughly, as I am sure they were skeptical. Did you call the police? Not yet. I figured I should probably call you guys first. Did you see if she was drinking anything? I did not see her with a drink, but I noticed she and the guy came out of the same bar. We will go ahead and take her in, but you might want to call the police and make a report about this. Yeah, sure thing. They took her off to the nearby hospital and left me to make a police report. By this time, it was probably already about 12.30 or so. I do not remember the details, only that I was tired. I googled the number for the police in this area and told two different desk workers the situation. I finally got a hold of an officer. This is Officer Kapoor. Yeah, I would like to make a police report. Tonight, while I was walking around town, I noticed a guy and a girl walking around, and, uh, the girl seemed pretty out of it. Then I happened to stumble on them as I walked by this alley over between the board game shops and the record store off of Cherry Oak. The guy looked like he was trying something. When I called out to them, the guy took off running. The officer asked me more details about the incident my name, at what time the incident occurred, where it happened, what the other man looked like, what hospital the girl was in, if I had any other details and asked multiple times for accuracy. I told her as much as I could, but was feeling a bit out of it myself. Could I get your number, please, in case I need to reach you again for more details? She asked. Of course. I said, and gave her my number. With that, she thanked me, and I figured she went off to the community medical center to check up on the girl. I am sure someone there probably found some identification on the girl. I finally got to my small studio apartment and got to bed a little after three. A few weeks had gone by after the incident when I received a knock at my small studio door one Saturday. Looking through the peephole, I viewed a very well-dressed elder 
Hispanic man in a checkered shirt and gray slacks with aviator sunglasses and a macabre rosary necklace around his neck. I opened the door, and he instantly showed a pleasant smile. Good morning, and inquired for me by name. Yes, that is me, I replied, still by the door. It is very nice to meet you. My name is Fernando de Leon, and I believe I owe you a debt of gratitude. There was a brief pause as I tried to process what I could have done to make this guy so happy. He seemed to realize, about two weekends ago, you made a police report about a young woman. Do you remember? Oh, yes, I did. Are you a detective, or? Oh, no, no. I am the young girl's father. Oh, her father, I exclaimed. Oh, is she all right? Yes, she is doing fine now, thanks to you. Would you mind if I come in? Normally in situations like this, I would just step outside to speak to the stranger in full view of my neighbors. But his appearance and demeanor had a disarming effect on me. And while I was uncertain as to why the girl's father would have hunted me down, I was curious to know the outcome. So I invited him in. Thank you, he said as he passed through the door. He let his eyes wander the little apartment I had, but still seemed to have a look of approval. I had a couple of bar stools at my bar counter, which I could have motioned towards. But instead, I motioned towards the small table and chair set on my balcony patio. I figured this might be more comfortable for him while still maintaining a certain amount of privacy. We went out onto the balcony and he had a seat. He did not seem bothered by it. Thank you, he reiterated. I felt compelled to come over and thank you in person. My daughter means the world to me. He took out a very expensive-looking phone. I'm not too keen on the model. He showed me pictures of the woman who I had seen a couple of weeks ago, but looking more coherent and happy. He showed me pictures of her high school graduation and of a very posh-looking birthday party. Oh, wow, was my response. She looks happy in these pictures. As you can imagine, I can at times be socially awkward. The man did not seem too bothered by it. Her name is Alicia. I do not think the detective ever mentioned her name. No, I never received any other details after she was taken to the hospital. Which I am grateful that you stayed with her, he said with a glance. I have a few others if you want to see. Without waiting for a response, he pulled out some small prints from his wallet. These were toddler pictures of her in typical princess pajamas. As a young girl in a quinceañera dress and one of their, I assumed, family playing in the snow. Oh, you keep quite a few pictures of your family on hand. Yes, my family means the world to me. She is as beautiful as her mother, isn't she? Then suddenly the look of joy on his face instantly shifted. I must confess that I have not been the best of fathers as of lately. Some time ago, we began to drift apart. On various things, we never saw eye to eye. Then sometime after her last college semester, when she was supposed to return home, she did not. I did not really know what to say to this, so I stayed quiet. The man continued on. I will get right to the point. My daughter had fallen on some hard times with the wrong crowd. I had heard rumors that she started prostituting herself out and cut herself off entirely from me. Had it not been for your police report, I do not think I would have been able to track her down. You were looking for her. How were you able to find her? Do you have connections with the police? Yes, in a way. Which brings me to my point. He locked eyes with me and gave me a piercing look that simultaneously had a look of burning passion while also giving me chills. I am a very influential man, one with a lot of resources and connections. I'm also forever grateful for what you have done for me, he said to me as tears began to draw forth. 
Oh, it was nothing, sir. I was just... Do not be so modest, he commanded with that same piercing passion. I was silent. What you did was a rare act of kindness. Most people nowadays, they stay in their little bubbles and shut themselves off to the world around them. But you, you took some initiative. You grew some cojones. The man took a breath and continued. I want to offer you an award, anything of your choosing. No price is too high, and no request is too absurd. Whatever your heart desires, it is yours. Oh, gee, I started cautiously. I do not know what to say. There is nothing to say other than what you request. Normally this would cost anyone else a very high price. But to show my endless gratitude, I offer this to you for nothing in return. There again was a pause as I took this all in. A tone of things passed through my head which I could certainly use help with. A new house, maybe. No oh, too big of a request. A new car. Well, I began. No, he interrupted. I admire your sense of selflessness, but under this circumstance I insist your request be for you and you alone. Your grandmother will be fine. Oh, I see. I stopped and began to ponder some more. I can see that you will have some issues with this, he said. I do not expect you to make your decision now, but allow me to offer some ideas so you can grasp the full extent of my offer. You are in deep financial debt, are you not? Oh, uh, yeah. My student loans were kind of hefty and I have a medical. That would not be an issue for me. I could make that all go away with no effort. And you're working two part-time jobs? Yes, I have connections that could help you. You would be making much more than you are making now, and in an awarding field that makes use of your degree. Speaking of which, have you considered continuing your education? Yeah, but I do not think at this point, even if I had the money, that I would have the grades for. I could get you into the best universities despite your grades. You could be learning from world-class tutors. Oh, wow, I again exclaimed. Yes, and none of this even begins to scrape the barrel of what I could offer. I could offer it all if I so chose, and it would not hurt me financially a bit. By the way, have you heard anything from your abusive, alcoholic stepmother? No, I try to not keep contact with... You would not have to. It was at this point that my blood began to run cold and the implications of what he was about to suggest. How did you know that my dad is married to an abusive alcoholic? I did a fair amount of digging on you. I wanted to know how I could help the man who helped my daughter. I could make sure that your stepmother does no further harm to you or your father. She could be removed from the picture entirely. I did not dare utter a word at this. While the prospect was tantalizing, a part of me had hoped that he was referring to mental help services. The man continued. Same goes with your ex, Julia, and that pendejo friend of your mark. I could do for them what I did for the pinche cabron who tried to harm my daughter. It was at this point that all allusion to what he was referring to was cleared. There are a few others, I am sure, who have crossed you. There were Chance and Jimmy, the pendejos, who also made some inappropriate advancements towards your ex and also attempted to humiliate you with their insolent, misguided machismo. What is it that you could do? I chanced to ask. Though a part of me already knew this answer. Whatever you would like, I can make them go away entirely, but not without some concessions if you so choose. It is my understanding that one owns their own business and the other is happily married and is a policeman. Their whole worlds can come crashing down on them. There was no amount of digging that could have led this man to know who the last two guys mentioned were. 
I'm not a religious person at all, but the thought did cross my mind as to who this man was. As you can see now, the man continued, there is nearly no limit to what I am capable of, and I can already see that this has been quite a bit for you to take in. The man rose to his feet, and I did likewise. He grabbed a card from his jacket. It simply had his name and number on it. Should you finally decide what it is that I can do for you, please do not hesitate to call. Thank you, I said, walking the man to the door. No, thank you. Have a nice rest of your day. After the man had left, I felt a sense of relief, as if I could gasp for air again. I was also at a loss as to what I could ask for. The truth is, while I could ask for my debt to be wiped, a new home away from this small town, a good career, I must confess that even at the mere mention of some of the people he suggested, my blood boiled. My father had been in an abusive relationship with the most heinous person imaginable. My ex and former best friend always espoused self-righteousness, even after what they did. And to be quite frank, I just hate bullies and assholes. Almost a month went by. I was hesitant to call him, though I also felt as though I had no other choice. I received another knock at my door sometime after I got off work. This man was a bit of a younger man, but with a suit and tie and a black bag. After inquiring about me, he introduced himself. Hi, I am Agent Diaz. Do you have a minute to speak? I right away figured this had something to do with the police report I had made, or possibly the father visiting me. So I answered, uh, yeah, sure and was about to step outside. Actually, if it is all right with you, would you mind if I come in to speak more privately? Sure. And then I opened to let the agent in. This time I offered my bar stools to sit by the counter. I really should eventually get a better place. The agent placed his bag on the counter and pulled out a small binder. Do not worry, you are not in trouble or anything, he said with an awkward smile. Oh, good, I said humorously. I figured this might be a little much for a traffic ticket. Then backtracked my joke. I am kidding. Actually, I am here because we think you may have come in contact with, uh, someone of interest to us. He pulled out a set of photos and handed them to me. Does this person look familiar to you? The various photos looked as if they came from CCTV cameras. I could not make out the surroundings, but they did not look local. Other photos were run-of-the-mill and looked as if they came from newspaper clippings, photos taken from business or family gatherings, etc. After a few seconds, I recognized that this was the man who had visited me. The agent must have noticed the slight surprise on my face. Do you recognize this man? Have you had any run-ins with him? Oh, um, I cannot say I have. His name is Fernando de Leon. He is a former Navy SEAL who we believe helped train a branch of the Zetas. A Mexican drug cartel before going off and starting his own cartel. Yeah, I am familiar with them. I read some stuff. I began to recall details from our meeting. I remembered his necklace, and this suddenly had the starting realization of what it was. It was Santa Muerte. Yes, well, I cannot give too many details in regards to the case but we do know that he has come to this area looking for his daughter. We retrieved your police report in regards to her, Alicia de Leon. She had run away from him about a year ago. He then handed me another picture, one of the man and the girl who I met that night. I heavily contemplated giving the agent the card that the man gave to me, but made an effort to try and hide it. 
I am sorry, sir, but I cannot say I recognize him or know who he is. All I did was make a police report for a girl who looked like she was in some trouble. But if I do see him or see anything, I will be sure to let you know. Do you have a number I could call? Yes, he said, taking out a card and handing it to me. If you do know or remember anything, do not hesitate to call. I know this must seem intimidating and a bit much to take in, but it would really help us out a lot. Okay, sure thing. And with that, the agent's brief visit came to an end and I saw him out. I sat on my small fold-out bed for a minute, thinking about everything that had occurred this past month. I was torn. I should call the agent. I should run out the door and confess that Fernando had stopped by my small studio apartment. I should tell him that he had showed me family photos of him and his daughter and offered some very unusual but clear offers. I could make an affidavit of everything that was exchanged between us. They could put me into witness protection if needed. Somehow I did not think they could protect me, though. How could I face Fernando if he gets prosecuted? He would know it was me. After what he told me, he would almost certainly get off. He must have known this. Otherwise, why show me the extent of his power? Why put that kind of trust in me? Besides, I had my own issues to resolve, and an opportunity like this does not always come along often to someone like me. I had a decision to make.